Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Renault stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Renault is a French automobile manufacturer. The company is headquartered in France and was founded in 1899. It went public in 2000 and currently trades on the Paris Stock Exchange. It also trades on the pink sheets. The company produces cars and vans. In the past, it has manufactured trucks, tractors, tanks, buses, aircraft, and auto rail vehicles. It's the ninth largest automaker in the world by production volume. The company owns 43% of Nissan and 1.6% of Daimler. Renault and Nissan invested 4 billion euros into electric vehicles. It has sold together over 300,000 EVs. It is known for its role in motorsport, mostly in Formula 1 and Formula E. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 10.6 billion market cap, they're trading at 36 euros a share and they have 290 million shares outstanding. Since we're looking at the ticker that trades on the Paris Stock Exchange, all the numbers are in euros. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they had their highest free cash flow in 2017 at 2.1 billion. Then it dropped to 1.9 billion. It's currently at 1.5 billion. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that was 5 billion euro in 2017, negative 8 billion in 2020. Revenue is the sales for the company, and that's decreasing each year from 58 billion to 43 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. An example is the cost of labor. And the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit, which is lowest in 2020. It peaked in 2017. Below that is operating expenses. Examples are marketing and depreciation. Then below that is operating income. They did have strong operating income before 2020 but in 2020 it was negative. Then you have the interest they pay in their debt, and they're paying the lowest interest in 2020, 371 million euros. It peaked in 2018 at 479. Then you have your pre-tax income, then your taxes. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And they had a big negative, probably due to an asset impairment. An asset impairment is a non-cash item. I would focus on operating income when I look at the income statement, not net income. They also had negative net income in 2019, but positive in 2017 and 18. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. So you can see they generate a lot of operating cash flow each year, around five to six billion euros. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. When the company builds another factory to produce more cars, the cost of that factory goes into CapEx the first year they buy it. Then in future years, the value of the factory is depreciated over time onto the income statement. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And free cash flow is the excess cash flow that's remaining to grow your business, to pay down debt, to pay a dividend, or to buy back stock. They do buy back a little stock each year. They bought back 200 million in 2017, then 40 million, then 36 million. When a company buys back stock, it decreases the shares outstanding making your shares more valuable. They also seem to be adding debt each year. They added about 100 million euros in 2017, 400 million in 2018, 1 billion in 2019, and 400 million in 2020. Let's look at the capital structure. 
25 billion of equity, 64 billion of debt. Their 28% equity, 72% debt. Their net debt is 42 billion. And their WAC is 12.34%. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 14 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 13 billion euros. We divide that by 290 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 46 euros. They're trading at 36, so they're trading at a 20% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply, Wall Street values the company at 39 euros, so they're also saying it's undervalued, just not as much as me. So you can see the stock price has really struggled over the years. It was about 100 euros at one point a few years back, but it's been coming down ever since. It looks like around March it hit its low point, but it's come up since then, but still trading at a major discount relative to its all-time highs. The company sells 700,000 vehicles in France, half a million in Russia, then in Germany, Brazil, Italy, Spain, China, UK, India, and South Korea. You'll notice the United States is not on this list. China and the US consume the most cars. But this company does not sell any cars to the United States. It does sell through its investment in Nissan, but there are no Renault cars in the United States. They used to sell cars at one point, but had difficulty with a lot of things, so they stopped. These are their top 10 models, and if you live in North America, you're probably not familiar with them. They have a really high beta, 2.17, so the stock moves more than two times the market. It's really volatile. The stock has gone up 103% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 46%. The 52-week low was 16, the high was 41. And the stock is trading below its 50-day, but above its 200-day moving average. About 1.5 million shares are traded each day on this stock and 25% of the shares are held by institutions. In the past year, this stock has gone up 105%, while its industry went up 121% and the market 43%. But in the past three years and five years, this stock has really struggled, while the industry improved and the market improved. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 85%, while its industry and the market grow about 22%. Analysts are forecasting their revenues to grow 8%, its industry 7%, and the market 7%. If you invested $10,000 into this company in 2015, you would have been up to $15,000 at one point. But if you would have held on, you would have been down to $3,000. But if you're still holding on today, you'd be at $6,800. That's a 6% annual loss. The biggest shareholder is Nissan at 16%. Then the French government at 15%, Capital Research, BlackRock, and Daimler. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 32, the median is 22. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the P.E. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 0.2. So investors are paying 20 cents for $1 revenue. That's a really good price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. There are 0.4, also another really good ratio. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet and they have 25 billion of equity, 18 billion of tangible equity because they have 6 billion of intangibles on their balance sheet. They have negative return on invested capital since they have negative operating income. I imagine this number is weak because 2020 was a rough year for everyone. I would expect this number to improve a lot this year or next. Interest coverage ratios EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income so they have negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can just cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are $22 billion of cash and $6 billion of inventory.
The company does seem to be well capitalized. They had 1.5 billion of free cash flow and 3 billion of working capital, and they don't pay a dividend anymore. So they have 4.5 billion euro of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 14 companies in the same industry as Renault, and if Renault has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. They have an amazing price to sales and price to book. Almost too good to be true. Their current ratio is below average, but it's above one, so it's okay. They have a terrible ROE. They're high in debt. And when you convert all the market caps to euros, they're much smaller than the average. And they don't pay a dividend like most companies in this industry. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 20% discount. This is a really important company in Europe, especially in France. It's been around a really long time, but they are struggling a bit. Their sales keep going down each year, so that is a concern. They really need to break into the EV market and make a name for themselves. I don't think they're going to get into America anytime soon, but if they were able to do that successfully, that could really boost their bottom line. I rank their free cash flow 6 out of 10, their revenue 4 out of 10, and their ratio is 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.